Hello guys, welcome to another tutorial episode on EMV. Today I'm going to be talking about offline steady data authentication on EMV cards. My name is Derek Benio. I will briefly explain some key terms which will make it easier to understand authentication. For that, we're going to look at keys and certificates, how to retrieve a certificate authority public key, how to retrieve and issue a public key, how to verify a signed steady application data. Then at the end, we will see a live demo of authentication on my bank card. SDA is used to confirm the legitimacy of critical EMV data stored in every EMV card. This helps to detect fraud in cards. The data to be verified are also read from the card. When authentication is concerned, you will always hear the terms, keys, certificate, certificate authority, and so on. I will use this example of a bank card. In this case, an issuer will be a bank. A certificate authority is an independent organization that helps encrypt data from the issuer with a private key and also provide a public key with which the encrypted data can be decrypted. And an acquirer is, for example, a merchant with a payment terminal. Cryptography in EMV card has two stages. The issuer encrypts or signs application data with a private key and provide the public key to the certificate authority. The certificate authority further encrypts the public key with another private key and provides a different public key. In cryptography, the security of data depends on how complex the key is, so there is mostly a private key depending on the cryptographic algorithm that is used to encrypt data. I won't go into details. The certificate authority public key further has a structure which is used by the crypto algorithm used. In EMV cards, only RSA is used to encrypt data. Here is an example for a Visa card. It contains modulus, its length, that is the key length in bits, the exponent, the registered ID index, and the corresponding registered ID, and also the expiry date. Every terminal ready to accept Visa cards will have to save this information for authentication. The Certificate Authority Public Key Index is read from the selected application using the registered ID during transaction. Using the Certificate Authority Public Key Index and the registered ID, the exponent and the modulus saved by the terminal will be retrieved. The Issuer Public Key Certificate is read from the EMV card. It has a tag of 90 hex. It has to be decrypted with a public key from the Certificate Authority which was retrieved in the previous slides. Take note that decryption here is according to RSA. The recovered data has the structure as shown on the table. To confirm the data, a concatenation from the second element, the certificate format, down to the issuer public key followed by the issuer public key remainder is done if it is present in the card. The issuer public key remainder can also be read from the card. It has a tag 92 hex. The concatenated data is encrypted using a hash algorithm of the indicator, which is mostly SHA-1. The hash of the encryption is also compared with the recovered data hash. Other elements like header, trailer, certificate format of the recovered data are also checked for correctness. At the end, the issuer public key modulus is the concatenation of the issuer public key and the issuer public key remainder if it is present in the EMV card. The sign static application data is read from the card with the tag 93 hex. The sign static application data is also decrypted using RSA and the issuer public key modulus retrieved from the previous slide. The structure of the recovered data is as shown on the table. The concatenation is also done from the second element to the fifth. The concatenated data is encrypted with the indicator hash algorithm, which is mostly SHA-1. 
both hashes are compared and if they are equal then static data authentication was successful okay welcome to the demo part i'm just gonna work you through my code because i just realized that the uh, visa card that i have doesn't support static data authentication so if i step here it tries to go into the dynamic data authentication but that's not bad because i'm gonna make another video and then i'll post it and there we're gonna debug together and i'll show you some of the values um but without that standing uh, let's go over to static data authentication so for static data authentication we have here to retrieve the certificate authority public key and the re uh, retrieve the issuer public key i'm gonna show you where i got my public key from so here it's from this site the eft lab now they have some public keys if you filter the visa here uh, you have the expiry date, so I'm using a live public key for Visa. So um, I already found out that I have this RID in my card, so I copied this one. And I saved it in my terminal, and that is here. So I copied it, copied the um, exponent, and so on. So that's fine. Um, now we're going to try to retrieve the issue of public, the certificate authority public key and the issue of public key in this one function. Now, uh, like I said uh, during the slides, um, we need the certificate authority public key index to and the re registered ID to be able to get the public key that we saved on the terminal. Um, put in mind that we are dealing with this scenario here. We have the issuer, the certificate authority, public key, uh, certificate authority, and the acquirer. The issuer uses a private key to encrypt the static application data and then provide a public key, which is also further encrypted by the certificate authority with its private key uh, to produce the issuer public key certificate. And then it provides this public key that we're going to use to decrypt this issuer public key certificate. And once we decrypt it, we get the public key, the issuer public key, and we're going to use the issuer public key to decrypt the signed static application data, which is also in the IC card to get the static application data. That's the whole scenario. Okay. Now, to get the um, certificate authority public key, I've already explained with the certificate authority public key index. Once we've initialized our public key here, um, what we need now is the issuer public key certificate with tag 90 hex. Um, once we read that from the card, we also need to read the public key remainder and the exponent. Um, there are some other things that we need to compare at the end, for example, the pen and um, the expiry date and so on. So before we compare that, we always need to read them. But I'm not going to go into details with those ones. Uh, my main focus here is to decrypt the public key certificate. So this is where I decrypt the public key certificate using my certificate authority public key and then i get a record that is um similar to this table so it has elements and we're going to check some of their elements we're going to check the header the trailer the format and if they're correct we're going to concatenate from the certificate format right down to the issue of public key and then we're going to encode it using the algorithm that is indicated by this indicator so it's mostly SHA-1, so we're going to encode the concatenated data here with SHA-1, and then at the end we compare it with this hash result. So this is what we do here, we initialize our record data, uh, recovered data, and then check the trailer and the header, check the format. Now we do our concatenation here, and after the concatenation we encode using the SHA-1. We first check the hash algorithm indicator if it's SHA-1 and after that we compare the calculated hash with the recovered data hash and if that is correct we also check the issuer id check the expiry date check if the certificate is valid and if all these checks are correct uh, we can get to uh, concatenate our issuer public key and the issuer public key remainder that is where we get the issuer public key now moving on to um verification of the static data we go in here same procedure we read the signed static application data which is with tag 93 
And once we have that, we do a minor check of the length as specified in the specification. And then we have a recovered data. The structure of the recovered data is according to this table to us. Well, it's not that big. So now what we check, we check the header, check the trailer, check the format. You always have to have these values. And if you're correct, we concatenate from the second to the fifth element. That is the pad pattern. And then we encode using the algorithm that is indicated by this indicator. And then once we get the hash, we compare the hash result with this hash. And if the hash is, is uh, equal, then uh, static data authentication is successful. So that's what we do here. We decrypt it here, uh, initialize our recovered data, check the trailer, the header, the format. And then here we need to build our static data. The static data is built um, using the static data tag list, which is of tag 9F4A. Uh, once we have that, Mm, we check if it only contains the AIP tag as specified also. Once we have done that check, we build the list here, do our concatenation, and then at the end, we encode here using the algorithm that is indicated, and after that, we compare the hashes, and if that is correct, we return EMV OK. So this was just a very fast run through and um, um, don't worry um, the next video is on its way and i'm going to debug there uh, so you can see exactly how um, most of the algorithm work um, it's not actually difficult this is the most important part if you understand this part and what has to be decrypted then you already know everything and what you have to implement is just the rsa algorithm I hope that was clear enough for you. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comment section and I'll be very happy to clarify them for you. Thank you. And don't forget to subscribe.